higher already. We've seen arrays, we've seen having all kinds of stuff inside an array. It could be numbers, could be text, could be Boolean values, could be a variety of different things. And we've seen how we can go through the items in the array, access them, and assign the value from each part of the array to whatever part of the application is actually accessing it. So there's an interesting object though that we want to kind of spend a little bit more time on, and that one is the function. So functions are really no different than any other kind of thing you might be storing inside an array, except for one thing. It's not just enough for us to access the function itself, we want to be able to invoke the function so that it does whatever it is actually storing. So in this video, we'll take a quick look at what to do when we're dealing with an array made up of functions. So let's go ahead and get to the code. So what I have here is a very simple example that contains just a couple of functions here. Function hello, function goodbye, hello and goodbye, what's up? And it takes an argument, one argument, name, and all I'm doing is printing some value using the, the name argument. So for hello, it just prints hello and the name. For goodbye, it prints goodbye and the name, and so on. So what I want to do is I want to create an array of functions that kind of contains all of these function references. So I'm going to create that function array equals, and in the bracket, I'm going to put hello, goodbye, hello and goodbye, and what's up. I'm going to use the autocomplete to help me out here. And notice how I'm defining the functions as part of our array. I'm not including the, the open and close parentheses. I'm just referring the function by name directly. And that's an important part because we, want, we don't want it to invoke automatically as part of the function working. We want to get invoked as part of us choosing which function to call and when. All right. And so if I want to invoke a function, so let's say that, you know, let function I'm going to call it fun just for short to avoid any kind of issues. I can just do function array bracket whatever the index position of an item that I care about is. Let's just say I want to go to the first item, hello. And so if I were to console, if I were to just you know run this code, right? And then let me refresh this page. Nothing's going to happen. And the reason is simple. What we have done here is just reference hello as a function by itself without actually invoking it. And so the way we invoke a function is by adding the open and close parentheses. And that's no different right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add the open parenthesis, close parenthesis, just like before. And now if I were to hit refresh, you'll see hello undefined, which is expected because the function is being called, but no argument has been passed in. So I'm going to put in, let's say, Batman. And so if I were to refresh the page now, hello Batman now appears. Likewise, if I change my function array from zero, the index position I'm passing in from zero to one, you'll see the next next function is called, in this case, hello and goodbye. And similarly, I can iterate through my items. In fact, let's see what that would actually look like. So for, you know, you can use any combination of functions to go to the iterators. I'm gonna use, I wanna be traditional here. I'm gonna use a for loop for statement, i equals less than function array dot length, i plus plus, and let's go ahead and say let fun equals function array bracket i and let's go ahead and say pixel the name of the the cat who's currently sleeping in the back right now you know our very famous star of a lot of these shows and now let's go ahead and run this example and if everything works out correctly all one two three four of these functions will get called with pixel being printed on the appropriate version so let me finish the page, and now you can see that all of these functions have been called hello pixel, goodbye pixel, hello and goodbye pixel, what's up pixel. So another example of all these functions being called using this approach. And the last thing we look at, since uh, a big thing I like to always highlight is how to pick a random item from a particular, in, a, in our array, and do whatever you want to do with it. And so in this case, it is no different at all. So let random number equals math.floor, math dot random times function array function array dot length okay and so now we let me just go ahead and make this much smaller so you can see more of it so the random number gives us this value and all that we need to do next is just like before we now have an index position which is what random number gets us let's actually call it random index just to just to keep things simple and so now if I were to do function array bracket random index and then again pixel and actually wait 
the random index should go after I mean the function call should go after this so now it should work just fine so now let me refresh the page you now see that each time I refresh what's up pixel hello and goodbye like one of these functions randomly from our array gets called and it gets invoked with the appropriate argument passed in and if you don't pass in an argument you can just remove this part right here so pretty simple if you have multiple arguments you need to provide just like you would as part of calling any function you can add a comma and you can specify your other function as well you know as you would need to in this case it doesn't make sense but you can imagine that in the case where it does make sense you have the ability to do so and so with that we just saw a very quick overview of doing something with functions which is a little different than how you might deal with the more traditional value like a text value or a number value because those you just get it fire and forget you can use it you're, you're done whereas when you have functions there's an extra step of actually invoking them and it's often not the most straightforward way on seeing how you can invoke them especially in a world where there used to be back in the day there used to be the eval function which is great for being able to say whatever i put in here just treat it like a function invocation for security reasons and a lot of other very good reasons that is no longer used. So the approach I showed here is one approach for having an array of functions and being able to invoke them in whatever format you want, either all of them choosing by a per index item or by randomly generating an index. So if you have any questions on this or any other topic that is web development related or just anything in general, post in the forums at formnetgroup.com and I and others will be happy to help you out. If you like this video or if you really did not like this video, still tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I'll be recording. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, on wherever a Krupa could be found. And if you like watching videos and you also like reading content like this in text form, I also write books, not just free on the website, but also in terms of paperback and Kindle editions, you can buy on Amazon and other book retailers. So check those out and let me know what you think. And with that, I will see you all next time.